Hello and welcome to Mythology Breakdown episode 2. We are so excited. We, it's just me. What am I talking about? I am so excited to have y'all here watching this again. Real quick before I get started, I want a shameless plug. Me and my husband's new podcast, Mythology Breakdown on Spotify. We're going to be taking a look at all mythology, just like we are on here, but it's in a kind of a longer setting and it's the both of us. So... I have someone to bounce things off of. <laughs> um, today, I kind of want to talk about my favorite cursed monsters that I'm aware of so far in Greek mythology. Really, I want to talk about two stories. I want to talk about the Minotaur and I want to talk about Medusa, two of the most well-known Greek monsters of like all time. Both of these people have, like, really messed up origin stories. And before I get into them, I want to have a blatant trigger warning that I do have a tick disorder. So I will tick during this video. If you are sensitive to that, please watch with caution. Um, so let's start off with the Minotaur. So the Minotaur is a half-man, half-bull creature. But do you know where he came from? Because I do. The Minotaur's mom is Pasiphae, and that may sound like it's an unimportant thing because, you know, why does his mom matter? He's a monster. Well, Pasiphae is essential to the creation of this being. It all started when King Minos of, like, the olden times dared Zeus. He was like, hey, Zeus, I'm in your favor. You like me, right? And to prove how much you like me, I want you to send me this white bull. And to show how much I appreciate you liking me, I will sacrifice that bull in your name. Sounds pretty good, right? It all makes sense. So Zeus is like, okay, you know what? I like offerings. I like, you know, I like things in my name. So I'm going to send you this white bull. So he does. And this white bull is magnificent. It's beautiful. Pure white. Just magnificent. One of the most mas beautiful creatures you'll ever see. Well, King Minos, he kind of sucks. And he gets this bull and he basically spits in the face of Zeus and says, Ha ha, I'm not gonna... I'm not going to do anything with this thing. It's, uh, I'm going to keep it. It's going to be mine. Well, Zeus was mad. So Zeus decided that he was going to curse King Minos' wife to fall in love with the bull. Because apparently in Greek times, they were all about bestiality. Who knew, right? Well, Pasiphae was the wife. See? See the connection? See how I said that she was important? <laughs> well, Pasiphae falls head over heels in love with this bull. Because why not? And so in order to... Mate with the bull? Uh, it just sounds weird. She fashions herself this big cow costume. This big wooden cow so that she can mate with this bull. Like, I kid you not, she made a cow costume. And, well, you know, she gets pregnant and she gives birth to the Minotaur, who is a half-man, half-bull creature. He has the upper body of a bull and the lower body of a human. Well, King Minos was disgusted, obviously. I mean, I would be disgusted, too. And he curses the Minotaur to go live in... Dad, da Daedalus's, Daedalus's, Daedalus's Labyrinth. And every year, King Minos would send offerings or tributes to this bull. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm wondering if it's maybe to make up for the fact that he was supposed to sacrifice the original bull to Zeus. That's just my thoughts on it, though. And these men were sent with offerings, but none of the men would ever come back. The Minotaur would kill them all. You'd think that they would have learned, but they didn't. They uh, Maybe they started sending stronger warriors. I don't know. This pattern keeps going for many years until finally Theseus. Theseus? Uh, 
Odysseus. I was right. <laughs> there are so many Greek heroes, and I need to figure all that out. Um, so he was killed by Theseus, who was just, you know, a hero of the time sent to bring an offering, and he succeeded in finally killing the Minotaur. So there is that. The second story I want to talk about today is Medusa. Medusa is one of the most underrated monsters in her origin story. Many people assume that Medusa was just this, like, horrible creature from the very beginning. But that's not true. So Medusa had two Gorgon sisters, but Medusa was human, and she was beautiful. But she decided to be a patron of the goddess Athena. So she worked in her temple and lived her life, and the worshippers of Athena, they decided to stay virgins. They remained virgins. And Medusa was fine with this. But she was so beautiful. She always had men trying to court her, and she would always, you know, say, no, thank you. I don't need that. And you know what? You go, girl. And then along comes Poseidon. And because misogyny and because their Greek gods just said whatever they wanted, he's like, I'm in love with you. Will you go on a date with me? Medusa says, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to go on a date with you. I've pledged myself to, you know, virginity for the rest of my life. And Poseidon, because he's a jerk, doesn't take this, doesn't take this no for an answer. And he attempts to rape Medusa. And Medusa runs into the temple of Athena and throws herself on the altar and prays and prays and prays for her to save her. And Athena doesn't. And Poseidon comes in and rapes her because why not? Actually, there's a hundred reasons why not, but Poseidon's a jerk in this. Seeing this, Athena got really upset. <laughs> Athena got really upset and cursed Medusa to become uglier than her sisters, with the power to turn any man who looked at her to stone. This appalled Medusa. She had no idea that this was going to happen until she accidentally turned a civilian to stone. She ran from the city in order to not hurt as many people, turning people to stone as she went. And this is what branded her as a monster. Because, you know, she was turning people into stone. Obviously, she's evil. But she was really just trying to protect people by running away. She finally finds an abandoned temple, and she decides to make this her home. While cleaning up the temple, she realizes that it's a temple of Athena. So she decides to fix it up and start worshipping again. And people would come to try and kill her, and she would turn them to stone as a self-preservation, basically. And over time, Athena noticed that Medusa was diligently praising her and giving her offerings and fulfilling her duties, even though no one was around to witness it. And this made Athena feel really bad for what she did. But instead of just reversing the curse, like I'm sure she could have, she sends Perseus to go and kill her. And honestly, like, when I first heard that story, I was shocked because, come on, we all know that Medusa is, like, the most evil of all. She's always portrayed to be, like, a super evil being. And the fact that she isn't, oh my god, it was just, it's just crazy to me. So yeah, those are my two favorite curses that I know of so far. We're going to delve deep into this. I am going to be a master of mythology over the course of this YouTube series. So real quick before I let you guys go, I just want to remind you one more time about Mythology Breakdown on Spotify. You can also find us on TikTok at mythology underscore breakdown underscore pod. Or you can find my mini series on TikTok at CC Phelan. Um, enjoy and drop below what thing what I should do next. Thanks, like and subscribe.